Cut the lights on lights and showtime, shine the lights on me. Go time and we don't grind lonely. Shine bright, that's what the lights oh, told me. So I take what's mine and I rise slowly. I ain't got no time for no right moments. So I take what's mine, shine the lights on me. Shine the lights on me. Living the dream. I'm in love with the lights. Hello, everybody. Live from Koreatown, this is The Ozone. Ladies and gentlemen, we're coming back to you on two days after the Super Bowl, and I have a sneaking suspicion that the world has dropped back into order. Mm. I don't know what's going on here, folks, but we're going to have a lively edition of The Ozone. I'm here. I'm your host, Omar Miller, in case you didn't know. You can find me on Twitter at Omar Miller if you'd like to discuss some sports issues or perhaps my political stances. Uh, and I'm here with my brother from the same mother, Terry Miller, also known as The Icons. The Icons. That's How you feel? I feel great. You feeling good? Let's rumble. Life is good? <laughs> Let's okay. rumble. Let's we, get it out. We got a couple things to cover here, ladies and gentlemen. Obviously, we have a big, big, big football game that happened. It was huge. Then uh, And then there's some interesting stuff happening in the world of boxing, strangely enough. They're talking about yanking the Olympics, uh, boxing from the Olympics, which I think would be a travesty. Some details on that. And, uh, you know, we don't speak much hoops, but... Apparently, there's trouble in paradise because Magic Johnson is pulling a Charles Green and he has a problem with keeping these strategies close to the vest. But we want to start off with the Super Bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, we took our time to hit the mics because we were a little too fired up by the evil empire of the New England Patriots falling to Doug Peterson, Nick Foles, Chris Laflamba. La Flambanco 96, as he's known as on uh, on Twitter. Chris Long, the defensive stud. I mean, just forget about it. What a game. And in, in true fashion of the United States of America and its audience, there was not a drop of defense to be found. <laughs> of course. <laughs> this, was, this was exactly what Americans like. We love it. I love a good shootout. Score, score, score. And, uh, and yet the defense showed up for Philadelphia right at the right time. It's a very interesting situation that well, took place out there. But you know what? It's just like you say. It only takes one. One time. And they only played defense that one time. They and did. it changed the game. And I'm going to tell you something that I thought was – the one reason I think they, they didn't play the kind of the intense defense, but I want to save it for the callers. You know, I want to jump right into it because we have a lot of New England Patriots supporters on the Ozone. And we want to. We we had a we had Gabe Rosado in last week, uh, a fighter, a tough as nails guy from Philadelphia, who told us that he believed that the greater story was Nick Foles, Christian man extraordinaire, coming back from being a backup to the Cinderella story of winning the Super Bowl. And I I I, t- I told you guys on the Ozone that I was riding with the Eagles as long as the NFL didn't step in and help the Patriots and let them play. They and, tried though. They they didn't. I have a conspiracy theory, but first. Let's go to Boston, where we will find... Hello, hello, hello. Boston Mike! Boston He's Mike. still alive! He's still there, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen! You sound kind of down. I mean, I, I think I would have to turn the volume down if you guys would have won your sixth championship the other night. And right now, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the engineer. I'm telling him to pump the volume up. But you all right over there. <laughs> Listen, you passed for 505 yards, seven different receivers, three touchdowns. You should win a game. I mean, my man's offense is incredible. Not if you don't have defense. You shouldn't win. Oh, the game. one punt the whole game, and that was Philly who punted. Uh, it's pretty incredible. One it's like punt. a video game. You know what? But everybody, uh, Mike, Mike, this is Terry. Everybody says that it's one punt, but Philadelphia actually stopped him on fourth down, which is big. They did. Yeah. They deserve well, the credit. Was- I got I got I got I got a take for you. Uh, you know, I feel like. Everybody in the world, except for New England fans, expected the Patriots to get calls because they always get calls. And I think that Doug Peterson had potentially prepared his defense to play a little bit softer uh, in certain ways because of that. What do you think about that? I don't think so. I, did you see like the, the Brandon Cooks hit? Well, he didn't get the call there. Or oh, yeah, but that, that was his fault. Me. He decided to make a U-turn. Come on, Mike. Yeah. You know that wasn't a dirty uh-huh. hit. He well, did no, that. no, no, that, 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 that I love the Brandon Cooks groin in the face move. What was that? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> that, was, that was almost X-rated. I thought I was looking at, at Cinemax for a second. You could have just pushed that ball. That was a first down. That was a first down. Day. You didn't need to try to get fancy and go On over the, the top. On the goal line. On That's the goal line. first down. Yeah, I'm with oh, you. Oh, you're kidding me. That crushed me. And, and uh, I, I, you know, I, I don't know. I, I thought it was pretty. Listen, six to one. 
Philly had six penalties, Boston, uh, New England had one. But New England never gets penalized because they, they, it's the Belichick way. You know, he scares the, he scares the refs, and they don't want to call. They don't want to pull the flag out. They tie it inside their pocket. Now, let me ask you this: Why are Boston fans, Patriot fans, proud about that? That means that you guys are cheating, and you know it. No one. It's like the New York Yankees. I remember watching a game where, where the, the ball, Andy Pettit's throwing a ball, and it's a foot outside. They go strike three. And the, and the Yankee fans game. loved it. And the Yankee fans loved it. Oh, and just like just like the Braves fans loved it. When Tom yeah. Glavin would stretch the, the zone 12, 16 inches. Yeah. yeah but I'm just, talking about the Patriots. Insane. The Patriots had one deep, uh, one one penalty, what, in the last three well, or four games? I would say that 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 uh, Hail Mary test, did you see the mugging of Hogan in that? And, I mean, for the love what of about, God. What about the two-point conversion where literally your guy Van Noy just literally pushed him out of bounds before the <laughs> ball even came? And oh, Gronkowski pushes on. off every single time. Uh, uh, please, please. Gronkowski, they got handles on the side of him like a bat. They're and, holding and, okay. on to him so tight. And, and listen, and speaking of that, what's your take? Do you think Gronk should retire? Because as a big fella myself, I and, and I don't know if I told you this, I just had, uh, just a couple months ago, I just had the knee surgery that I needed on both of my knees. Are you- I finally got it. You were it. telling me that. Yeah, I think, I think we mentioned that, maybe. Yeah, so I, maybe I, I caught that up. on on extra. Maybe it could have been, been on E. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I say is, is I see Gronk's greatness, and he is great. There's no two ways about it. You'll never catch me saying anything different. But Gronk's greatness has put a target on his body. And, and it seems as though, you know, they've beat him up so bad I don't know how much longer he can go in the league without having some permanent damage. And, well, then, I, and then to boot, they go in and burglarize his house. Terrible. I know. Yeah, I'd like to see him do two more years. I'd like to see him really? do two more years. You think he got then. two in him, huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm greedy. I'm selfish. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. well, at least you're honest about it. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. I mean, give him two more years. Uh, he is tied with um, – I, I, I'm not a huge fan of, of, of Jerry Rice. I'm sorry. Jerry Rice used Stickham his whole career. He admitted he used Stickham. And then later on, he's calling um, uh, deflating the balls cheating. And Joe Montana called Brady a cheetah. That Joe Montana, when that ball came back to you, was it a little sticky? You didn't know that it had been outlawed two years before Jerry Rice came into the league. But he used Stickham his whole career. Wow, so hard. Please. But, but what about but what about the so, Patriots though? Because yeah. because because you, you want to get two more years out of Gronk. Give me this. Give me a quick quick highlight of the game from your perspective. What were the key plays that made the difference? Uh, the key plays that made the difference. That, well, it was a preseason Super Bowl game, is what I said. <laughs> I called it. I said um, um, the, the 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 Brandon Cook groin in the face. Where, where I, which I, I had no idea what the hell that was going on there. Yeah. And then he the, tried to hurdle a man a, standing up, which is usually yeah, you try to hurdle a guy just, going low for a chop, uh, a chop he, tackle. Could have just he could have just pushed into him and got the first down. That was one of my big things. And then that damn listen, Jake Elliott cost me twelve hundred fifty bucks. I had a square. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, you know, this a lot of people got point. boned on those missing points, man. <laughs> well, you know what? But it actually made the game, it made everybody's numbers active. Because yeah. I had a friend of mine that he, he got, we were in a $50 pool, and he got a 2-2. And he goes, he goes, I go, and thank you for the donation. <laughs> because I had 3-0. <laughs> I, had, I thought for sure I, I counted that $1,250 in my pocket. But I, I think... Um, not uh, first of all, um, I, uh, Gilmore played um, spectacular. I, um, he was excellent. He was uh, beyond excellent. He was targeted six times. Um, they only targeted him six times, and they got uh, three catches for a measly seventeen yards. All right, if they had stuck him on Jeffries to begin with, he's a man-to-man guy, anyways. Hmm. I, I, I think that Patricia kind of. Um, I don't know what happened. Well, Malcolm Butler sitting. Yeah, yo, let's let's talk about that because I wanted to speak on I, that. That was it, to me. That was a, that was another one of these. I'm the smartest guy in the world. Moves that backfired on you. I agree with. Well, him, I think it, I agree with I, Belichick I, I, because Belichick. What Belichick was saying is that role is bigger and he can match up with you know Alshon Jeffries because Alshon Jeffries is like six three. And not only that, Malcolm Butler's been getting burned all year. The Patriots yeah, have the know, 29th worst defense in football. Let's establish that. Yeah, let's establish that. But at the same time, well, if you're the playing se- them 98% uh, now, of the seven, snaps, then... then six, viewers, 
six few, fewest points scored. They had the six scoring defenses. I mean, fewest points scored, which is what you really have to go by, not yards. Um, they're the six best um, defense in the NFL, fewest points scored against. Uh, the, the Patriots did, and um, and they played some worthy opponents this year. So, but I, I, what I'm saying is is um, if you're not going to play the guy, why dress him at all? It you seemed know, like a wh- humiliation tactic, and as a former athlete, I don't appreciate stuff like that. I feel like something oh. needs to be done because that kind of stuff, oh. man, it rubs people. This is why everybody leaves New England not with a smile on their face, sure. even if they got sure. a ring. You know, this look sure at Garrett Blunt punching a coach. Short from punching the coach before the game starts. I, I don't really – I would have had him on a, on, on a plane home if he did – now, he's denying – they were saying that it was – um he curfew. missed curfew. He did show yeah. up – he missed – he did show up a day late. I, I'll yeah, but, but they said that I, was an authorized illness. They said that that was like – I understand And I believe that, that because that. everybody – everybody's got the flu nowadays. I, I understand that they said that, but I mean, I, I didn't see him in the hospital. No one's showing me any hospital records that he was getting an IV. But uh, I, I think he, um, it, they said he's had a discipline issue, and he has been um, pissing and moaning all year about a contract. He has been, uh, he's been pissing since Stephon Gilmore got his the deal and came here for the sixty-two million. And 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 um, Butler, uh, Gilmore, once they made the adjustment in week four. It's been spectacular. I, I think he's one of the most underrated defensive backs in the league. Uh, he he is um, uh, well worth his money, and he played uh, in the playoffs. He was the best, I think, one of the best defensive backs in the whole playoffs. But Stephon um, Gilmore has been one of the better cornerbacks in football for the past couple of years. I, I get that. I get that. But for the first four or five games when he came here, we were trying to figure out who he was. I, 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 I was like, and we, we let Ryan Hogan go for um, for him. I'm like, uh, Ryan Logan, I go, uh, but he he's come back, and you know. But I I just we lost it in two ways. I said I think we lost it with, with Matt Patricia not making adjustments and not really establishing enough of a running game, and the receivers not catching the ball out of the backfield, which is really a big thing. And and maybe Brandon Cooks the the deep threat was gone after that that I the mean collision. Listen, he he's he set himself up for that. He play. sure did. But it was. It, but it was still a helmet on helmet. No, it wasn't. That first, the first, the first, the initial hit was to his shoulder, and then it turned into a helmet thing because he couldn't protect himself. He didn't see what was coming, but he was by no sure. means defenseless sure. because and most he of the turned into that. Well, and this, we're talking about the one where he took what, the U-turn and got I know, lit. I know, but it was he, incidental. He didn't leave with his helmet. He didn't, the defender. The uh, guy I'm didn't even you, look at the, still, the, exactly. Malcolm whether, Jenkins whether went to, they, it was, it's still... Two helmets collided. No, nah, I can't roll. I can't roll this time, Mike. It, now, well, what I will I, say, what I feel like, what I feel like was a a, a big key, and it, you know what, I think it came about because Cooks, the deep threat, was was you know hurt and couldn't play the rest of the game, was the idea that Gronk was a ghost in the first half. Yeah, and it's like, almost like well, they wanted to use him as a decoy, and they came out in the second half when they realized that the Eagles weren't intimidated and they wore you down. <laughs> they gave you a, a, a hunk and chunk and bar of, of Gronk. Yeah, well, you know what? They double teamed Gronk early and they took him away. And then after the second half, they let him they let him roam around one on one, and he was lumbering at that, that point. That might have anyway. been a big mistake too. I always thought maybe Gronk was still hurt. I was thinking the same thing. Coming. That's I was thinking the same thing. Yeah, but I mean, the, the, obviously he wasn't. He had over 100 yards. And yeah, he was good. And he almost pulled that last ball down. <laughs> yeah. oh I have to say, God, I had bated breath on that one. That? It didn't matter. They could only, um, they would still be down by one. You have to get an extra point. They were down by eight, right? We, we, they we would have been down by two. Uh, yeah, I mean, they would have been I, down by two. They would need to get the, believe it or they, not, they would need Gary, the extra point. It or that not, not the extra point. They need believe the two point conversion. I've seen them go down with less than two minutes down by eight. And 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 um, score a touchdown. I saw him actually do two two point plays in a, in a game once. The <laughs> year before the Super Bowl. So, <laughs> so now tell me this. I, I, I spoke I with you. No issue. I spoke with you, and you felt like Boston had a chance to win all four championships this year. You saw the Bruins well, with a shot. You saw the Pats with a shot. You see the Celtics with a shot, and you saw the Red Sox with a shot. I see the Red I, Sox I with a shot, and and especially if they can close uh, well, this deal up with JD Martinez. Are playing dynamite. The Bruins are playing dynamite now, and um, uh, what, what, what are you talking? What, what did you just say? Especially with what? I said if they can button up this deal with JD Martinez. Yeah, uh, yeah, I think JD Martinez is a good player. I don't. You're telling me he's like the second coming. 
I'm think, not. I'm not telling you that. But what I'm telling you is, he has the pop that you guys were lacking last year that yeah. might have got hey, you past he, the Houston Astros in real life. Yeah, but it, see, the key is if we do get JD Martinez, then we st- then we trade JBJ to uh, to the Cubs. For that third baseman of theirs. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> what, you, you, you lost your mind. Uh, once you again, you're on narcotics. You yeah, you got to let that. You got to <laughs> let that, gonna that gonna stuff happen. go. You got to stop using that's, that stuff, no, no, Mike. That's the deal. That is the deal, my friend. There's you a zero percent chance that, that, Chris that Bryan, the Chicago yeah. Cubs <laughs> trade Chris Bryant for Jackie Brown. Jackie Brown. There's a zero percent chance. You can put a both in there. If we can't get Bryant, we'll take Schwab. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure you would. No, no, you actually don't need him. You actually don't need him. I'm telling you, you get JD Mar- I, I feel like you're you're discounting JD Martinez. JD Martinez is, is a almost master, has 100 dude. home runs in the last two years. Yeah, <laughs> that guy matches the baseball, Mike. I think you're playing them cheap uh, right now. You to know all what? fields. When he was, listen, all fields. Anybody could have had him from Detroit be, before he went to uh, this is true Arizona. Anybody he hadn't have developed him. yet. I, he's 30 years old. I mean, uh, well, we watching just, people play sports yeah, until but, they're in When he was 25, 26, he hadn't developed yet. Yeah. Now. This is J.D. Martinez, ladies and gentlemen. He leaves the yard. I can tell you, he yeah, came out four. here to L.A. and hit four bombs. I think he got two off Clayton Kershaw. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the guy's not, well, he's not listen, playing. Yeah. I, 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 I'm going to stick by my thing. He, he is a, an expensive Mitch Moreland. <laughs> uh, oh, no, Mike, no. why do you always go so far? You, you this is why far. your team lost the Super <laughs> yeah. Bowl. It's all on you. It was your fault. You always exaggerate too much. Now, I will say this in your defense and in the defense of Tom Brady. I have no idea. I understand why people are, you know, don't like the Patriots per se. There's a lot of connections with President Cheeto and so on and so forth. <laughs> and and I, I know that that's not the connection that you have with them because you're a native. And yet, at the same time, People are acting like Tom Brady's a loser in some way for going five and five. And somebody had the nerve to ask him after the game, how does he feel about losing five Super Bowls as though it's something to be ashamed of? And well, I will he's say only this, lost three Super Bowls. Three, 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 three. Five and three, sorry, about losing yeah. three Super Bowls. And, and ultimately, Tom Brady has left the lead, left, left the game. Once again, Tom Brady came with off the, the field lead. with the lead. Uh, what do you but want Tom he, Brady to do? He doesn't play defense. He, I, he, <laughs> don't go both ways. In, the, in those three Super Bowl losses, with less than four minutes to play in each of those games, Tom Brady has scored a touchdown to give his team the lead. Come on, man. In those three Super Bowl losses. Come on. He a just moved the ball right game. now. Yeah. He just moved the ball at the end of the, at the end of that game. They did get them in a position to get the Hail Mary up. I will say this, yeah. and this is my last piece. I ain't going to wear you out all day. I thought it was absolutely fitting that they lose the Super Bowl on what could have been misconstrued as the tuck rule, which started his legacy and mm-hmm. which will mark my words. Oh, I was end hoping for his a tuck legacy. Rule. I know you were hoping for <laughs> a tuck rule, <laughs> and, but we weren't in Foxborough, so you didn't get that punk call because Ooh, that one, that one, that was not Listen. a tuck rule against uh, Chuck Woodson. We all know good and well. I just, as a matter of fact, did, I had a great conversation you, with Ben Baller that, about it. You know what? Can I tell you, Omar, what that tuck rule is a makeup for? What was it a makeup all for? The, all the tears I cried in that <laughs> 1976 playoff game when Sugar Bear Hamilton sacked Ken Stabler, and a half a minute later they throw a flag and say, rough in the passer, and then he hits that scumbag Bolitnikov in the end zone for a touchdown. It was fourth down. The game was over. We won. We won the game. Oh my goodness! That was not. Nice. Uh, you know, well, I had that cross on my back all these years. And I you've can't been bearing stand it. Stand the Raiders, and I can't stand. And that fat bastard John Madden won his <laughs> Super Bowl, and that was my Patriots' first Super Bowl, nineteen seventy-six. They should have won it. They had five running backs that ran for over five hundred yards. Steve Grogan ran for 11 <laughs> touchdowns that year. 11 rushing touchdowns. For the love of God. Sam well, Bam Cunningham. Well, uh, Minnie Mac Heron. Randy Vitaha. John Calhoun. Steve Grogan. Russ Francis. Stanley the Steamer Morgan. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, you only, get, on you only get talked like this on the Ozone. This is a native. John this Hall man Canada. bleeds Patriot blue and Leon silver. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, went, I had Patriots pajamas. I had the spirit of '76 Patriots, and that asshole made that call, roughing the passer. I said, 
The seventies were rough for you. Hamilton. He the- sacked him, and you know what? That was vindication for the love of God. I finally got it in two thousand one. Uh, yeah. Well, it was I a said, bad call, yes. and it launched your empire. And you guys have ridden it out. Congratulations, because well, the ride it, is over. The ride is over. The ride is all over. Your the Raiders seventy seven. The rough and the passer. The Patriots went into Pittsburgh and de- decimated the Super Bowl champions. Slapped them around like they were children. They had two losses that year. They should have they should have been undefeated. That was one of the best teams ever assembled. That seventy six set a Patriots team. You look it up. You see how <laughs> are you Mike, kidding? Mike, Mike, are Mike you Haynes, kidding? Are you kidding? Raymond Claiborne. <laughs> uh, that defense was loaded with superstars. That whole team was kidding? loaded. Are you Mike, better loaded. than the Steelers, better Mike. than the Cowboys, better than the 49ers, better than the Giants. Better than that Seahawks team. Better than that Seahawks Jeez, team. One, Come on, man. one of the best ever. <laughs> better than the Packers. Come on, man. Mike, Boston <laughs> Mike, we love you. You, you, are, you are family in the Ozone. Give a shout-out for Kong real quick. Give a, give a shout-out for Kong real quick. All right. Free Kong now. We've got to stay for him. Until May. Oh, great. We got to stay wow. until May. Oh, wow. Good so, work. Now, was that so, through the efforts of the uh, Facebook page and, and the tireless work you guys are doing for him? Um, you know, uh, hopefully a little, but it, 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 but they, they're, they've just continued this this case. We, they, we went on the uh, 31st of January to uh, ICE. We brought him to ICE with this ticket again, his ticket in hand, and they said that they were giving him another reprieve until May, but they're going to send him away. But we need as many people writing as many letters for freekongnow.com. And um, it just just petition your local congressmen and your senators to let them know. We have Senator uh, Diane Warren um, and um, um, uh, Maki and our Keating is our rep, and they're all on our side with them. You know, and, and, and maybe uh, after the midterms, maybe we might have some uh, enough uh, votes in the House. We might uh, be able to switch people over. Maybe he's Kong still here. I just we need some immigration reform, and that's really the big thing. And um, I and I had a wonderful meal at his restaurant the other day, and it was excellent. There we I go. I had the kung pao chicken and the um, <laughs> crispy Kong's beef. Kung pao so chicken. That's Hava, awesome. Man, that sounds like a place Tokyo. where a Jackie Chan fight will break out in a movie. I love it. Oh, it would. It would. It would yeah. <laughs> I love it. Boston awesome, Mike, you thank you. Stars like Omar Miller there. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, brother. Appreciate you calling into right. the Ozone. I love you guys. And I, like I tell everybody, the biggest star in Hollywood. Oh, he is 6'6". <laughs> <laughs> oh, All right. man. I'll talk to you soon. We'll catch you at the beginning of right. uh, spring training guys. after Late, you guys man. make some moves. Yeah. I'll be down there. I'll be down there for uh, the beginning of spring training. Ne- in two weeks, I'll be in um, uh, Fort Myers. There it is. All right, Mike. Talk to you All soon. Right. Late. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you got to love our friends. You got to love the Ozone listeners. Uh, this is hilarious. <laughs> we got another listener of the Ozone who had contacted me who, who's actually a Philly fan, and he wants to have his say, and everybody in Philly wants to have their say, and I can understand it, and he really appreciated us riding with the Eagles pre-Super Bowl. And let's get him on real quick. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, Philadelphia Bobby, what's happening? What is is, what? The, is that eagle flying right now? What's going on? You're live on the Ozone, my friend, and we I just wanted to give you it. your time to shine. I mean, I, I, my phone has not stopped ringing for 36 hours. It's been insane. <laughs> <laughs> my, my best friend is back in Philly right now. Ryan is back there looking at the trophy. He went back to see it. Wow. Really? Yeah, he's from Michigan. I, I, I'm trying to go back for the parade, but because it's on Thursday, I can't go. Now, you, you talked to me previously about how the Eagles were going to come in and smack up the Rams, which actually did end up happening, but you guys took a major L in Carson Wentz. Did you believe that Nick Foles was going to be able to get you there? And what do you have to say about your coach? Because to me, Peterson's a real MVP. I, I mean, never did I think when you throw a backup in, are they going to be able to pull it together at late in the season and then take us to the Super Bowl? But once he started playing, he looked like he's been playing all season. Yeah. And so being at that game at the Rams when we watched him go down in front of us and our hearts fell out of our chest, he came in and finished that game and won it. And he just kept doing it through the whole time. But Doug Peterson, he he can't do anything wrong ever again. <laughs> like, I'm sure there will be a trophy or uh, there will be a, a statue next to Rocky soon that will be Doug Peterson. 
I, I mean, listen, and he deserves every piece of marble or whatever it is, the copper, bronze that they make it right. out of. Because that guy, be he went and took the champ's belt. He did exactly yeah. what was necessary in comparison to every other coach who folds under the lights and folds under the intimidation and pressure of Belichick versus Brady, Belichick and Brady versus whoever you are. We watch it time and time again. He stuck with his guns. He believed in Nick Foles and his players, both offensively and defensively, and he made aggressive calls throughout the game that won you guys the Super Bowl. He sure did. I mean, the Philly special on fourth down against the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl? Come on, man. I think, who, what, who do, what do you call that? A Geno's, a Geno's large cheesesteak? <laughs> Pretty much. That's with all the whiz you can get. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm still in shock. I keep watching the highlights. And right now on uh, the Equals Instagram page, they have that play up with the, him mic'd up going, should we go with the Philly Philly? And Peterson's like, yes. He goes, here we go. And he gets to the huddle and he goes, Philly special. And they all knew what it was. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, you gotta look, check it out. They just put it up like a half hour ago on their Instagram page. Uh, we're, all, we're all in shock still. It, it's amazing. Now, tell me this. Why do you guys feel the need to tear the city up? And well, horse crap. Other, you know what? No one's talking about the idiots in New England where 12 people got injured and six people were arrested, and they're rioting and they lost. And, <laughs> and, and somebody broke into Grunk's house. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why is no one talking about that? They're only talking about Philly. You know why? Because we have passion. We're not half. We're not half a fan. We're there the whole time. We boo you when we lose, and we cheer you when we win because we want you to know we expect the best. Wow, wow! I'm Always ready. It. Well, Bobby, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for calling in. I think maybe the last time I saw you, you might have been on the streets of Philadelphia when I was shooting a movie it, out there. How random was that? Oh uh, yeah, we exactly. Paranoia. That was crazy. Like that was nuts. <laughs> Speaking of which, that was the only time I've ever been to Philadelphia. I know, and I was there walking down the street the other way. That's nuts. That's nuts. So random. All right, man. Well, enjoy the champagne. I will. Uh, I'll catch you sooner than later. Thanks for being a part of the Ozone. Oh man, this is great. Really? Super Bowl. I'm feeling good. You know, I don't. Why know. is it that they eat horse crap? That's what I need to know. I why don't is it, Why I don't would you participate anybody... in that? I need. I don't need a win. I don't want the Super Bowl if that's the part of it. That's that's a part of it. Why not? Dudes, literally walking down the street eating horse crap. Why you can't? Why not? <laughs> yeah. Get you some. That's a Philly special, apparently. <laughs> cheese Whiz. Do they put Cheese Whiz oh, on it? I, I just want to know. I don't know which one is worse. The horse crap or doing somersaults on an awning that's frozen into a concrete crowd. It's amazing nobody died. Dude, I, I would die if I ate horse crap. I couldn't do it. I mean, they picked it up. They squeezed it, and they just took a chunk oh. out of it. And, ah! Oh. Eagles! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> oh man that's terrible god that's terrible man that's uh not good for your health you gotta be allergic to horse crap i'm sure i'm sure you got a lot of corn it. in it probably I, 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 I do lots of grass i'm sure wow but, you know there's a there's a couple things about the super bowl that i did not like even though i feel like the Philadelphia Eagles, hopefully this is a sign of things to come in 2018 because I think it was definitely positive. Feels like the Allies won one from the evil axis this time. Um, but there was a couple things that disturbed me about the Super Bowl presentation. Um, one, I really didn't appreciate them appropriating Martin Luther King to sell Dodge Rams. Right. The cultural uh, appropriation on that was, and I love a good Dodge Ram. But, but who owns the rights to, you know, the Kings? King's footage or... I don't know. The intellectual property, as they but, say. But whoever it was... They that, sold out. ...that authorized it was the wrong way, especially because there is a an actual clear-cut case before he passed away where he called out Chrysler by name uh, right. in, uh, in, in rebuking them for some certain activities and, you know, living wages and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's just where does it stop? Where does it stop in America? It doesn't. It's just unbelievable. That's the problem. We don't have a, a gauge. There's, you never stop. You never get enough. This is crazy. You, you, you literally are taking a total and complete icon and you're reducing his speeches about human rights and civil rights. and To, to sell cars and trucks. To sell cars and trucks. To sell a product. I mean, it's just, I really can't. Like, and the acceptance of that, I could see all across America people taking pride in that. <laughs> and everybody looking like, yeah. Capitalism at this its is finest. why I'm an American. <laughs> and, and it's just mind-blowing to me because these are the same people who then in turn would have 
had a problem with Dr. King supporting a, a kneeling protest in the league. Exactly. Which is just, just uh, I don't know, that, that, that bothered me. Another thing that bothered me is Tom Brady walking off the field, not shaking hands and getting praise for it. And if we remember just two years ago, Cam Newton exactly. did the same thing. And Cam's response was, y'all show me somebody that's fine with losing and I'll show you a loser. And everybody rode him. He's not ready. He's a bad role model. He needs to grow up, so on and so forth. Tom Brady does it. Oh, he's a champion. The oh, look at the, look at the competitive when, edge. When they, it was him and Odell Beckham, when Odell Beckham went to the sideline and yelled at his teammates, and Tom Brady goes and yells at his teammates, and he's the greatest thing. Oh, look at this guy. He's a competitor. And Odell Beckham, they, you know, they're ready to put him in prison. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, no, this is uh, – the double standards, folks, you guys got to cut it out. You really have to look at yourselves in the mirror objectively, as hard as that is to do, because we're all subjective to our own biases and whatnot. But you have to look and realistically say to yourself, now, would I see this the same if this were another person? Most of the time you wouldn't. And it's hard to recognize our own prejudices, and we all have them. Um, but it's really hard. Just like this situation with uh, uh, Cheeto now trying to politicize uh, the the Colts linebacker that was killed. Yeah, you know he was going to jump on that. I mean, this is just completely mind blowing to me. This guy just got done calling players sons of bitches and for kneeling and this that. And now and the he other. wants to use them as the marker. As as the marker, uh, because oh, so- for, for everybody who doesn't, if you if you don't happen to know the story, um, the player for the Indianapolis Colts, Edwin Jackson, I think he was a linebacker, was killed um, in an Uber, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a drunk driver in a drunk driver an incident. And the drunk driver was an uh, illegal immigrant from Guatemala who had a previous record of uh, drunk driving in California. And the fact that this guy decided to jump in and politicize this when he has been putting down, needling belittling the cause the players their parents anything that has to do with anything that he doesn't personally like in his normal racist rhetoric and to then try to use this is really uh, it's low it's really really low really really no and you know reggie bush called him out for it which i thought was great and he's catching a lot of flack online he said uh it's a disgrace. Uh, it's disgraceful that the POTUS is using the death of Edwin Jackson to mislead the American people into thinking that the issue of crime in America uh, are undocumented immigrants solely to further his racist agenda. And it's true. It's true. I, I, I applaud Reggie for that because this is this is stuff that needs to be spoken out on. Definitely needs to be spoken out on. But to move back on this uh, Malcolm Butler situation. Malcolm Butler actually spoke out about the rumors of what it was that he missed and so on and so forth and said, during my four-year career with the Patriots, I've always given it everything I have to play at a high level, and I would never do anything to hurt my team's chances of winning a game, including this year's Super Bowl where I visited my family every night. During Super Bowl week, I never attended any concert, missed curfew, or participated in any of the ridiculous activities being reported. They are not only false but hurtful to me and my family. Uh, Although I wish I could have contributed more to help my team win, I have to get ready for the next opportunity. Moving forward, I will do what I've always done to work hard and prepare for next season to be the best I can be on and off the field. And in a beautiful uh, endorsement teammate-wise, Tom Brady actually responded and said, Love you, Malcolm. You're an incredible player and teammate and friend, always, with about 20 exclamation points. Signed off on him. Signed off. Class act. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah, but you know what? I was listening to Boston Mike talking about how Malcolm Butler, you know, was upset about Stefan Gilmore being paid. He should be. He should be upset because Malcolm Butler actually won them a Super Bowl. Uh, he's the, he Stephon was Stephon Gilmore has not won them anything. Exactly. And so I should be upset because you don't you want to bring somebody else in to take my job and you want me to take less than. But I'm the one who just won you the tippy top of the sports of, of football, you know, the top of the pops, the top of the pops. And then, so you want me to take less than why should he do that? Why should he accept that? He shouldn't. He should be upset. He should be upset. Yeah, and I don't understand the theory for the Patriots and their team always wanting players to take less than. So why is it that LeGarrette Blunt is supposed to stay there for less and uh, Chris Long and everybody else, they're supposed to take a pay cut. Well, who else is taking a pay cut? Just to be a part of the Yeah, just to be a part of the the organization. Why is it? LeGarrette Blunt led the league in rushing touchdowns. touchdowns, In touchdown period, right? I do believe. So why is he taking less? Why would he take a pay cut? I did my job the best. Well, I was yeah, the best. Exactly. 
So he shouldn't take a pay cut. And instead of being awarded, he's they docking his pay. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, this is a situation where it seems like they showed the Patriots this time <laughs> because Chris went Long back to back. and Garrett went back to back on you. That was great. Blunt force trauma. I want to see how they're going to bounce back as far as coach wise because they don't have they lost their coaching staff pretty much. Well, and I think that every year that you age at this point where Tom Brady is now is an exponential year of aging. Well, Rodney Harrison called it out as well because it's something that we always talk about. When Tom Brady takes a hit, he's not he's just he's just a regular quarterback. And you just started hitting him and pushing him around a little bit, and they were actually just one hit away from literally getting blown out because you got Brian Hoyer as your backup. Yeah, that you can almost say that about everybody except the Eagles in the league, but I, I hear what you're saying. Uh another thing that I wanted to to speak on is the undeniable bond of faith that was clear in the right. Philadelphia Eagles and their their leadership. Doug Peterson got on stage and thanked his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, right. followed by Nick Foles, followed by Zach Ertz. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, this was like a revival out there, <laughs> and I thought it was fantastic. It was great. You for, know, everybody, you know it. for everybody who has taken, you know, uh, an interest or it has attempted to walk a faith life, a spiritual life, especially if you're following the Christian path, we can tell you it's very difficult and you fall and fail a lot. It's not easy. And for these guys to publicly, publicly profess their faith in this way at on the highest stage, I just I thought it was beautiful. I thought it was a situation where those things and those individuals should have that right and that opportunity, and that actually is what makes America beautiful. Yeah, and they don't have to get up there and say, oh, yeah, you know, we were really lucky this time and all that kind of yeah. garbage. Hey, yeah. man, I want to stay, thank Jesus Christ, though. You know, <laughs> he, he, he brought me through this one. He did. <laughs> this he, a he got, he he got, got me, me up. Dub. He got my <laughs> I man. I appreciate it. He got my man open. He got my man open. He got my man open. And I don't have to hide it. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was, I really thought it was great. Another thing we want to speak about is, you know, here in the Ozone, folks, we tell you guys all the time, primarily when we go to to boxing matches, uh, you should watch sporting events, maybe not the first time, but the second time you watch them, you should watch them with the volume off uh, and just watch the games because the commentators have a heavy, heavy mental influence on how you feel about what you're seeing. There is a disconnect between what you're seeing and and what you're hearing oftentimes. And it's like that old joke Eddie Murphy used to tell about the ice cold players who would get caught in bed by the woman with another woman. They say, wait a minute, baby, who you gonna believe? Me or your lying ass eyes? <laughs> <laughs> and the and the truth of the matter is, is that if you listen to these guys subliminally and not so subliminally cheer for one group or another, or one fighter or another, or something like that, and not call it square, you, you will be influenced. In. Yeah, you're gonna buy it's it's impossible not to. And that's what seemed like happened with Chris Collinsworth. Man, I was watching the game. I flew back from Las Vegas, and I was watching the game at home alone. I was amazed at the bias. I'm talking about no matter what the Eagles did or how much they went up, Chris Collinsworth was there for Bill Belichick and the Patriots. <laughs> I haven't seen such nut riding since uh, Ahmad Rashad with Michael Jordan. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it was and, bad. And he, and he didn't do it in-game. This is in-game. Yeah, this was that was That was inside stuff. Side. That was, yeah, that was, that was later on that week on the, on the, the program. This situation... Was I, I? I was amazed. It was blatant, and it was I'm terrible. talking about it was they're ugly. down ten, they're down twelve. And here it comes. That was a nice touchdown he from qu- Foles, but it's only a matter of time until he folds over. He He's quest- not gonna be able to keep it up. He questioned every touchdown, every catch. I mean, come on, man, Zach Ertz, literally. Oh, come on, dude. And Chris, Long, and Chris Chris Long called him out. On yeah, Chris, Chris Long tweeted out, Ertz takes seventeen steps, and Collinsworth says he thinks they have to overturn it. Uh, along with four crying laughing emoji faces. <laughs> this was a first down regardless. regardless. He, didn't even, he didn't even want to give him a first down. Unbelievable. He acted like it wasn't a catch. Yeah, he acted like it wasn't a catch I don't care if we're all. playing on the beach, in the streets, at the JC, in high school, Pop Warner. That is a catch. And everybody, and everybody knows that. And everybody catch. knows that. And the ground can't cause a fumble. And not only that, he caught the ball after he let it go. Come on, man. So, you know, this is something that... that I'm, I'm, I've never been a part of sports broadcasting, so I'm interested to see, do you get... You know, like, uh, do, do they do you tell get a memo? you? Does, oh, no, well, that's interesting, too. I'm saying, do they tell you to be non-biased, or do you get a memo to say, actually, this is our guy tonight? I don't know. I mean, with Chris Collinsworth, it looks like that that's just him. He's just not even a homer. He's just into it. You know, he picks his people, he picks his squad, and he rides with it. But that's not good for the fans. If you're just watching the game, I don't want him to try to guide me which way I should see the game. I saw the game for what it was. 
Which Philadelphia is, was getting busy. They, they stopped him on fourth down. Crotch in the face. Everything. I mean, they did everything they had to do to win the game. In your face. Uh-huh. Hands on. <laughs> Hands on. <laughs> and you know what? And they made the gutsy calls. Everybody's talking about illegal formations and everything else. Come on, man. The Patriots have been playing with the rules forever. And now we – I haven't heard the NFL come out and say anything was wrong with that formation. Have you? No. This is no. – I've heard a lot of people talking about that the formation was illegal. I haven't heard anything from any official that said that that formation where Nick Foles caught the touchdown No, no, no. But illegal. what it was, it was not an illegal formation. What happened is, is they had to pitch and pitch – and then throw. There was some sort of specific No, 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 no. Rule. It's supposed to be an illegal formation. That's a, because yeah. of like five guys in the way that they formated or something. Right. But I don't see a problem with it. Bill Belichick's been doing it forever. He, I remember he did it against the um, the Ravens maybe four or five years ago. Remember? And, he, and they won the game like that. Yeah. I mean, you find the loopholes in the, in the, in the game and you exploit it. Yeah. And, and you know, the Patriots had that opportunity too. And Tom, Tom Brady dropped the ball. Came up the T-Rex. Surprisingly, because I I feel like you can throw that ball to Tom Brady and once again hundred times and ninety eight times of catching and once again Chris Collinsworth saying hey you know look at this guy yeah, you know uh, maybe it's his hands bothering man the dude's got a cut on his thumb you think that's gonna stop him from catching the ball I I mean I don't know and now here's where my conspiracy comes in where you guys your ready conspiracy? for it give it to me now we sat here with Gabe Rosado from Philly and we actually posed the question. And Trucker Dave posed a question weeks before when we all picked the Jags over the Patriots, and he said it plainly. Come on now. Do you guys really think the NFL is going to let the Jaguars beat Tom Brady and have Blake Bortles versus Nick Foles in the Super Bowl? And to which we all had to say, oh, well, yeah, I guess you're kind of right. Yeah. <laughs> and they went out there, and that's exactly what happened. They got jobbed, and then they were complicit in it. And this is another reason that we feel like Peterson actually did a great job because he went and took the champs' belts, right. which was great. Um, because they didn't open the door for New England to get help. Right. Now, here's the thing. Save that holding penalty that was not a holding penalty where they called on Malcolm Jenkins. Yeah, the phantom hold. A phantom hold, the phantom menace on the drag route on third down, which would have stopped the drive and potentially set up the blowout, which is what they did not want. Yeah. You guys got to follow me on these conspiracy theories when I lay them out. The thing is, is that all these people are professionals. I'm a professional actor. If you give me a little help, if you give me a second take, you know what? You can count on me. This is what I do for a living. As a professional athlete, when you give them just a little help, you call the foul to get the big man in foul trouble in basketball. You don't call traveling. You call the outside corner six inches off the plate in baseball. You make a couple penalty calls here and there in football. It doesn't take much for these guys to You're take advantage. Just looking advantage. for a little window. That's all it is because Tom Brady actually is that good. Yes. And 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 the, the other guys on the team, all of them, are that good. That's why they're playing. That's why they're making big money. Now, this is where it took me a while to come up with this one. But I tell you, the NFL, other than being a – Ten billion dollar a year slash nonprofit organization for the last forty years, which I think they just recently changed. I think it was two years ago they changed. Now, other than other than that, showing their business acumen, what in the world is a smarter move than getting the golden boy, the face of the NFL, to the dance? He is looking at the storyline, which is will clearly, in most people's eyes, make him the greatest of all time by having him have the most championships of any quarterback of all time and any organization of all time. You set all that up against a team that's never won one, who's playing against a backup. What in the world is a better twist, a better plot twist, than to then actually let them play and not give them the help that they normally get, that they've gotten all year, to pass the torch to a new whole entity of beautiful young players who are all faith-based, who are all like the the face of America that you would like, especially in the, in the eyes of uh, uh, declining ratings and so on and so forth. These guys are really solid guys, I have to say. The guys on the – Super Bowl ratings were down. I think they said 9%. 7%. 7%. 7%. Yeah, but th- th- that has to do, I would think, with just the idea that it wasn't Manning versus blah, blah, blah versus Brady and blah, blah, blah versus blah, blah, blah. But – uh, and it also has to do with what you're intimating, though, which is the protests. You know, all of this stuff is actually happening. There is a lot of people on my timeline who were saying, hey, 
I haven't watched an NFL game all year because Kaepernick got ran out of the league. Then there was a lot of people I read saying, I'm not watching the Super Bowl because these guys are kneeling and they're disrespecting things. So, you know, they're, they're, they're getting it from all angles right now. What's a better way to draw everybody back in and to draw Tom Brady back so that he doesn't retire? Gronk probably won't retire. Belichick will probably come back for another go around. Belichick said he's coming back. So you have you what you were able to do was you were actually able to dangle the carrot in front of the New England Patriots. And that, and their competitive, coupled with their competitive drive, makes them actually want to say, let's go get it again. What are you, crazy? And unfortunately for them, they're going to have to go up against this whole new crop of young teams that are real. And real fast and everything else, and you're old. And you're old, and you're going to have to restock your coaching staff, and you're going to have to restock Stock your, your players. players. You've got to restock your defense because it's non-existent. It's one of the worst in the league. Yep. What's a better way of doing that? And I think Gay Rosado, he, he called it. It was great because the Cinderella story there is beautiful. And now you also set up more drama next year between these two great young men in Carson Wentz and, and Nick Foles. Shout out to Carson Wentz for getting engaged. Great for him. He, and he, and he was even clever because he said, now we both got a ring, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> and uh, now you got the drama of both of them trying to figure out who's going to be the starting quarterback. How is it going to go from there? You have a potential dynasty, honestly, set up in Philly. They got a really good team. Right. And um, and then you have the old guard. Was that a passing of the guard, passing of the torch? Changing of the guard, if you will, like they do in boxing? Or was it all coincidence? This I'm is feeling more coincidence. Ogrodamus. <laughs> I hear that, but your, I feel like <laughs> you're a conspiracy theorist. You're a resident conspiracy theorist. I, th- I feel like it's more just coincidence than anything because the Patriots don't pass the torch, you know, and you literally have to go out and beat them like that in order for them to, you know, in order for you to win. You have to make the extra. They didn't know that Doug Peterson was going to go for it on fourth down. He had already made it up in his mind that I'm going to do it regardless. He had said that. He said, I'm going to go for it. I'm not going to sit around and kick field goals and I'm going to be fourth and one and kick a field goal. No, maybe to start the game. Yeah. But after that, he was like, hey, man, this ball's to the wall. We're going for it. And you took the champ's belt. I don't think that the Patriots had any say so in that, really. I don't, I'm not saying they had a say so. I know, but I'm just talking about the whole pass the torch feeling that I'm getting is that you have to have something to do with it. Usually, that's not true. You just have to be the the inferior opponent that happens to be the champion. You see it in boxing all the time. You were super great and you were the best. You're the only person that doesn't know that you're <laughs> that, that, I'm that, you're, that you're not that, 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 that <laughs> you're, you're slow. <laughs> we saw it last weekend with that Lucas Matisse fight. Yeah. Lucas Matisse was moving in slow motion, man, and he really shouldn't fight anybody, any of those top dudes in the 147 category. Even though he knocked that big guy out with a jab, he shouldn't fight any of those guys in 147 because them boys out there right now will hurt you, man. Well, it's just like Boston Mike said, he's being a little selfish by wanting to see Grunk come back for two more years. Grunk is slow now. Grunk has great hands still, but he's you can you can hurt Grunk now. You can literally hurt him to the point where he might not be able to function as, as well as he should after football. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. It's and just, Tommy was definitely a tick behind this year. It was not in the Super Bowl. Not in the Super Bowl. Because man, he got he two weeks to rest, the though. Super Bowl. Jeez Louise. 505 yards. Yeah. Whew. That boy but, moves the ball, Jack. Yeah. But he didn't do that against the Jags, though. No, he did not. So that's what we got for the Super Bowl, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pretty impressed, and I'm pretty happy about it. Um, I am stoked. I'm I'm freaking stag. I told everybody I wanted them to win. I don't care who was playing. I did not want the Patriots to win. I don't even want them to win for the next 10, 15 years, honestly. <laughs> you may not have to worry about it, to be honest. With the way that uh with the way that they're gonna have to rebuild, um, and then with the way that their division is getting better. I'm very interested to see what the Dolphins do. I'm very interested to see the what the Dolphins do. Dolphins are a big letdown. That used to be my squad too. I'm, I know. I'm I'm over the point of being dedicated to one team. You have to be like a hired assassin. I'm going to be a hired fan. You know what? You can hire me and I'll be your <laughs> super fan because the teams aren't loyal. Why should you be loyal to them? They're not loyal. These teams ain't loyal. <laughs> they, they'll sell you out, you know? It's literally, look at, look at Blake Griffin. He got sold out. Look at all these other teams, all these other players. They hold out. They have the Malcolm Butlers and everybody else. So if you're a Malcolm Butler fan and they trade him or get rid of him or just release him, what, you supposed to ride with the Patriots? Maybe that was your man. Yeah, yeah. Why should I be loyal to the Patriots? You got rid of Malcolm Butler. And what if he was your man? What if he's the one who won you that money? Exactly. Yeah. So I got to roll with Malcolm Butler everywhere he goes. I'm with him. That's how I was with Shaquille O'Neal once he left the Lakers. Yeah. I just ride with the diesel. Um. Well, moving on into the world of boxing. This this looks to be a very promising year in the sport. 
Uh, Starting off a lot slower than it did last year, though. It is, but I think that's because we're going to get some serious heat come springtime. And, <laughs> that uh, heat rock coming around. It's coming around. For one, they're saying that uh, that uh, uh, Terrence Crawford fighting Jeff Horn is really, really close. And that's a fight I want to see because I think Terrence Crawford is going to beat the crap out of him. Of course. And, and just like Manny Pacquiao did, but worse, actually. I oh, you think, think worse? Like, yes, because Manny Pacquiao got hit a lot because yeah, you could tell Manny, he wasn't focused. Yeah, but Manny let up on him. He, this is what I'm talking about. Terrence Crawford's not going to let up yeah. on him. He's still hungry. He's, probably he's, get him out there in probably four rounds. He huh? might, but that kid seems like he likes to get hit a lot, though, so he might get hurt. Uh, but He's a bleeder, too. Yes, it's going to be ugly. And, and uh, you know, I don't think it's going to go to the cards. I'll tell you that much. Um, we got that. We got uh, Anthony Joshua is preparing. That big fella about to start fighting again, man. Mm-hmm. You just get ready. He's fighting fellow titleist Joseph Parker. That should uh, be a good fight. I think that should be a good fight. And this, I, I would go 50-50 on it, honestly. Wow. Yeah. You like Joseph Parker that much? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like a Joseph Parker fan, but I feel like he can give him a, some serious competition. I can't go 50-50, but What'd I, you go? I think... What'd you go? 49-51? I mean, no, 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 bro. Would you believe? 30? <laughs> I'm going, you know, 60... I'm, I'm going I'm going 70-30 then just because at the heavyweights, anybody can get yeah, anybody the, out of there. Yeah. But I, but I, I, I didn't I believe, like the way that Joshua fought last time. I didn't either, but I thought I think that that was one of those situations where styles are making fights. Um, but I, I feel like he fought you. down. He did fight. And he did, I, stand and, down! <laughs> he stand down, down, soldier! He did, he did. And then, uh, you know, did you watch his fight this weekend uh, with this no. uh, Zerdu Ramirez and versus uh, Habib Ahmed in the super middleweight category? No. This is interesting because there's this guy, a Mexican fighter, uh, Gilberto Zerdu Ramirez, who is, you know, trying to make his name. And he beat up on a cat. I mean, this dude, he was running the whole night and he just beat the crap out of him. And he looked good. And they're fighting at 168. The reason this is important is because. 168 is that division that Andre Ward left Mm -hmm. that then kind of left the division open because Mm -hmm. he went up there and fought at 175. Mm -hmm. And it's that go-between division where it matters whether you're Gennady Golovkin or whether you're, you know, Andre Ward and Sergey Kovalev and Adonis Stevenson and all those guys because right in the middle it's jammed up right there. I'm interested to see what happens in that next fight. And... The beloved Ty Homie is coming back, ladies and gentlemen. He is. And he's coming back to fight in L.A., which he last time he fought in L.A., he showed up and showed out and knocked out the homie Chocolatito. And I'm a very big fan of Chocolatito. And, uh, Chocolatito looks scared to death. I, listen, he, that dude must have had to just drop bombs because he put a hurt and he was not impressed that second fight at all. Yeah. He, the first fight you could see at least. The second fight he walked through him. Walked through him. He knew he was going to knock out. And it him looked out. like Chocolatito knew that he was going to get knocked he, out. It did, unfortunately. And he was fighting not to get knocked out more so than he was to win to the win. fight. Yeah. And it went the wrong way because he did get he put gave to him, sleep. Yeah, he t- didn't pay his electric bill. Didn't. So that's coming up on the 24th. If you have time, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the Los Angeles area, I do believe it's at the Forum. It's either at the Forum or the StubHub. StubHub is a great place to watch a fight. It sure is. I don't especially think on there's a, a bad night. seat in the house. And I'm going to say something else uh, that we really need to speak about. Why is Roy Jones fighting again? Are you kidding? I'm not kidding. I knew I said this. This is why I had to slow it down. For you. <laughs> Are That's you kidding? Why I had me? to slow down the clock for you. Roy can not speak already. What Roy is- can speak when he <laughs> feels like it. It just jab, takes jab, me time and an uppercut. <laughs> it don't take him time. It's just he's just super over enunciates. But here's the thing: he's why? fighting a guy. He's fighting a journeyman, and he said that he was going to end his career in. Uh, where it started in Pensacola, Florida. And so he's, he's found a journeyman to fight and the guy's name is Scott Sigmund. And, uh, have you seen Scott fight before? No, but I don't, I don't want to see a 49 year old Roy Jones fight. We I saw didn't even want to see a 39 year old. We exactly. We saw what happened to B hop and how he got punched out of the ring and all, you know, he almost got that coach. Yeah. He almost got that coach. He it almost busted his head ugly. and that can, that can do serious. I mean, damage. literally out of the ring onto the concrete. Yeah. Onto the concrete, and so. and Roy is is not anywhere close to what B Hop was. was. Yeah, B Hop was still a competitive fight. Yeah, he was competitive. Yeah, Roy has looked bad for what a decade, About twelve and a half? years. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say twelve, fifteen years. And, and Roy I fight. love Roy Jones. Yeah, and Roy I, this is this, fight, is, this is no disrespect to Roy Jones. Yeah. I, I, all of his last fights, it probably his last ten fights, he was fighting not to get knocked out, and yes. you saw it. He came out there scared to death. And he was just so happy on the fights where he did not get knocked yes. out. He was like, see, I told you I wasn't going to get knocked out. Well, that's, that's what his body language was screaming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I don't know, dude. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So that was, uh, that wasn't necessarily. Wow. I can't believe that. That's crazy. Can you believe that? Hey, I just met you. This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, did you see this war of words going on between Abel Sanchez and Teddy Atlas? No. Oh, wow. Really? Teddy Atlas said that he's, uh, let me see if I can find the clip. I think Golovkin is a guy that is starting to uh, is starting to slip. Yes, I think that I also think, and I said this before, it was popular to say that he was an overrated guy. I said it on your air. You guys jumped all over me. Oh, how can you say that, Teddy? Oh my God, he's one of the greatest fighters. No, I, I said it a long time ago. Where I didn't think he was as great as people were putting him up to be. He was knocking out a lot of junior middleweights, a lot of 35, 36, 37 year old European junior middleweights, where he was over, where he was overmatching them. So I didn't see him as that great. But Teddy, who wins the second? Who, Teddy, who I wins the second fight? That he won this fight. He won it clearly. And I'll tell you, in the rematch, I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to pick Canelo because he because he is slipping. There's no doubt about it. He's slipping. Golovkin being he. And Canelo's got more upside. He's the younger guy. He's going to gain confidence from this one. He wasn't sure if he could handle the size and the strength. Now he is sure he can handle it. And I think he's going to be more consistent from an offensive standpoint in this rematch. And I think Canelo will win the fight. And he might win the fight easy. Didn't in, wow. In, wow. Once again, Teddy Atlas is high. <laughs> and, and so... Uh, Teddy Atlas has been in the ring too long. And and so Abel got wind of his concept. Uh, the, the Triple G's trainer, uh, Abel Sanchez, got wind of his comments and said, well, Atlas is the one who's overrated. Always has been. <laughs> Finally, ESPN took the blindfolds off and earplugs off to clearly see and hear that, which is why he got uh, uh, why he, he got terminated. Opinions are easy to offer. Look at the ones before the fight. The bottom line is the fight proved who was best, and the public knows what the scores should have been. Those opinions are irrelevant, and people like Teddy Atlas and Adelaide Bird seem to use a beautiful and dangerous sport to make themselves relevant. Wow, that's deep. But I, honestly, Teddy, Teddy Atlas banged for Triple G on that after that, and I think that one of the reasons why he was fired more so than anything is because he came out and talking about how corrupt boxing was. This is true, and he even just said it in that piece. He said, "He said I thought Golovkin clearly won the first yeah, fight." Yeah, and he also said that you know. Uh, uh, Canelo has the most upside. Uh, you know, just saying a little bit, maybe I'm feeling like he's saying that, you know what? He if, may be saying a little too much about, about the way the boxing works. Yeah, because if, if it goes to the cards again, you know that Canelo is going to get it. You know, because Triple G has already stated that he was thinking about retiring. Right. Uh, hopefully he'll retire at the end of this year after he gets through getting banging on everybody at the end of the year. He, yeah. He's not overrated. He's a generational fighter, and people should give him credit for that because he's done everything that he was supposed to do. He's fought bigger fighters. People talk about him moving up. He moves up. He wins. He knocks the big guy, the bigger guy down. He outboxes people that he shouldn't. And every time somebody says something, it's like, hey, he should move up. Hey, he should move up. Pretty soon you have him fighting Anthony Joshua. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like right now, see, no, look at him. He's knocked out. Yeah, I guess I'll do weight 250 pounds. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to see what's what uh, come Cinco de Mayo, and I'm really excited for HBO um, Boxing putting on that card. Yeah, I can see who you're going for. And <laughs> uh, I'm with Ganayevich Golovkin as well. Um, but I think it's going to be a great year for boxing. Really excited. Some great cards coming up. And there was a couple great setup fights that have already happened, but nothing too, uh, you know, too, too groundbreaking. Uh, now we want to move on to the quick spat in basketball. And, uh, I, I mean, I thought this was pretty amazing because this is straight out of a page in my fictional character, Charles Green's, uh, book that you saw in last season of Ballers, which was, you know, the NBA fined $50,000, finds the Lakers <laughs> 50 racks for magic comments about Giannis, uh, Ante Quampo, And basically <laughs> they're calling it tampering. That was light tampering. I, would, I, I wouldn't even give you a light tampering. I wouldn't even give you a light tampering. He he was just throwing it out there. I didn't hear anything in there that stated that he, you know, he was trying to reel him in over here. Well, I mean, maybe it was just in the praise. You know, nowadays we're in a very delicate time. You have to be very delicate with your words. You, you <laughs> can't can't lather anybody up with flattery right now. You might catch you a case. You might catch a case. So this. Uh, he was not PC. He was not PC. And they, asked him, they asked him if uh, if he saw parallels between himself and Antetokounmpo's play, and he said, oh, yeah. 
Uh, with his ball handling skills and his passing ability, he play above the rim. No, I could never do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but he, you know, he gave him love. He said his understanding of the game, his basketball IQ, creativity, shots for his teammates. That's where we have the same thing. Can bring it down, make a pass, make a play. Just happy he's starting the All-Star game because he deserves that. He's going to be like an MVP, a champion. This dude's going to put Milwaukee on the map, and I think he's going to bring them a championship one day. I mean, he didn't really have to say, he didn't say much about bringing him to L.A.? Yeah. He said he's going to bring them a championship. Him. Yeah. I mean, he's already established the groundwork for, for fondling the goods, though. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that. Can't Imagine do that. you got to lay off, knock it off. He Don't play grab ass. He played. He, he, he did. He played a little bit of grab ass. <laughs> Put your gloves down. You guys want to walk? We'll run. This is my college, uh, high school coach, folks. Um, so moving on to our favorite sport because football is over. That means we are one step closer. I mean, one step. Are you kidding? To Major League Baseball, ladies and gentlemen, it is almost time for spring training. Can you smell it? The fresh cut grass is right outside your door. Can I always smell it. Unbelievable. Now, there's a very interesting uh, uh, situation brewing in Major League Baseball, though, and it's the guys aren't getting signed. Never in the history of the game have we seen going into February, two weeks away from pitchers and catchers reporting, and marquee free agents not being signed. I've read an article speaking of the players in their last CBA collective bargaining agreement sold out for luxury over, you know, the actual situation of them getting good contracts <laughs> and apparently they're all mad about it brandon moss said did that exact thing he said hey we all agreed on that cba but we agreed to some stuff that we shouldn't have agreed to yeah and uh now why is it that they want to blame tony clark for that i think because he's the president of yeah but he's, he didn't make you guys agree if you guys saw something in there that you didn't agree upon then like in the sag that sag has the meetings right and if you don't agree then you're supposed to shut it down you're supposed to say hey i don't agree you vote on it herein lies the problem I, I imagine it's the same in Major League Baseball like it is in SAG. Most of us don't actually go to the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then you're like, man, how do we get this and agreement? Or vote. And then we say, man, we got bone, man. The producers <laughs> got a great deal. The writers got a great deal. Where are my residuals? So, you know, that, that, that's always, you always have that. <laughs> you always yeah. have that part of it. And then now they're feeling like it's collusion between the owners, you know, to, to shut it down so these guys can't get the big payday. The biggest payday has been Lorenzo Cain so far, right? Renzo got paid. J.D. Martinez is on the verge of getting paid. Well, I haven't heard about J.D. being on the verge of getting paid. Well, I mean, they, they offered him 5 and 130. That's, <laughs> that's getting paid. That, but that's hearsay, though. Nobody has confirmed that. Not even Scott Boris, really, right? Because they're saying that they said that they offered it, and then it's been like back and forth that, no, this hasn't happened. Or well, what I, what I think is happening, though, is I think they're just trying to get some extra years. I think the Red Sox may be trying to get a couple extra years out of it. And I think that JD is not trying to give up those options, but you know that's all the details of the. Uh, but you have you Darvish, Jake Arrieta. There's a couple of there's a couple there's of big, names, big names. Out yeah, there. that and Eric Hosmer still hasn't signed. Yeah, and I think the Padres offer Eric Hosmer some some nice money. I don't know why he would want to go to the Padres, but you know. Yeah, well, let's hear what Brandon Moss, who just got uh, traded back to the Royals, had to say about the situation. The international signing bonus money is a lot. Everything is bargain, and. I, uh, obviously, this is my own opinion. I, I don't want to sit here and pretend that I represent all of the players. I don't want to sit here and pretend that this may or may not be a popular opinion. This is just from my perspective as a guy that, you know, I, my career is almost finished, so I don't have to deal with this much longer. But the worry is there for me as far as a player now for players in the future that enough attention is not being paid to the way – we allow our system to be ran. I feel like we put more things that are of less value at the forefront. And <clears throat> I just feel like uh, we're starting to have to walk a little bit of a tightrope uh, that we've created for ourselves. I think that we have given the owners and we have given the people who are very, very business savvy uh, a very good opportunity to take advantage of a system that we created for ourselves. And, um, I'm not sitting here saying that we have – we're not better than anyone else. We're not sitting here trying to say like, hey, man, I deserve $180 million. I deserve $200 million. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is we have the right to bargain and set our price just like the owners have the right to meet that price. Uh, but what we've done is we have incentivized owners and we have incentivized teams to say – we don't want to make that price. We don't want to meet that price. It costs us too much to meet that price. It costs us draft picks. 
It costs us international signing money. It costs us all these different things. We're going to have to pay a, a tax if we go over a certain threshold that we set ourselves. And so I just think that by doing all those things, what we have done is we've given the owners and, and teams and franchises an excuse to not pay top free agents, to, to have a reason to say, no, we don't want to go after these guys because this is why. And the only reason those things are there is because we bargain them in. If I'm an owner, my goal is to have the bottom line be in black, to put a winner on the field and the bottom line to be in black. And the more opportunity you give me to do those things, the better off I'm going to be. And I just feel like as, as players, we also have to watch out for our own interests because if you run too good of a deal out there in a bargaining agreement, then of course the owners are going to jump on it. You have to be willing to dig your heels in a little bit and fight for the things that the guys in the past have fought for. I'm sure that those guys in the early 90s were not excited about going into spring training without a job, without having a salary, without being able to say, this is what I'm making this year and this is when I'm going to have a job again. But they did it, and players like me benefited from it. And I just hate to see players like me taking advantage of a system that was set up for me by other players and not passing it along to the next generation of players. And, you know, everybody wants to look up and scream collusion. Everybody wants to look up and scream this isn't fair. But sooner or later, you have to take responsibility for a system you created for yourself. It's, it's our fault. That's Brandon Moss, ladies and gentlemen. He 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 put he it, laid down. it down. He, he laid it out there, and you know what? He didn't mince words, which you always appreciate. And uh, he kept it one hundred. You and you know what? The the biggest problem with that CBA, and even with the luxury tax that's going on, is that you give too many teams benefits and bonuses for losing. I mean, come on. You You're talking about with like a revenue share and all that yeah, kind of stuff? Yeah, with the revenue share and all that kind of stuff is ridiculous. Why should the, the, the Padres or any of these other lower-level teams that not don't have to get themselves together, yeah, not, not have, have to spend to, any money? What's the motivation or, to get your or, or money, get money from together. the yeah. Dodgers and the yeah, Angels and, and, and the, the Yankees. Yankees? Yeah, The Yankees pay for their players, even if they have to pay too much, but they want to have a winner in their city, and they know that this is what they have to do, so they'll pay for it. So you don't sit around and have a losing team and say, well, you know what, we're still going to be in the black because, you know, we got to, you know, we, we, we didn't put that product out there and you go to these stadiums and you see the stadiums half full and everything but there's no motivation to fill the stadiums because they're still getting paid wow it's the truth yeah it's the truth but they're gonna have to fight this battle and it's gonna be interesting to see what happens because the clock is ticking it's coming like, yeah and they're talking about holding out in spring training right yeah. now. yeah yeah and this is gonna be a great season of baseball so i sure if hope they start they, that's <laughs> what i mean that's sure hope they come I, I sure hope it comes together well, all they can do is hold out for the spring. They can't do anything for the season because all of them are under contract. That CBA is binding. So they're going to have to perform. Either they, we might see some bad baseball in the first two months. <laughs> yeah, I might get a call. <laughs> I might get I a call. Get, my knee together. get your 10-day. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great edition of the Ozone. Fired up, ready to go. 2018 looks like it's ours for the taking, unless you're a Patriots fan. Mm. And uh, you got anything else you'd like to add? No, not right off the top of my head. Great work today. And uh, gonna lead you, gonna lead you down the path of enlightenment with a quote from Mr. Benjamin Franklin, and it is: "Wealth is not his that has it, but his that enjoys it." Live your life, folks. Live it well and enjoy every minute of it. This is the Ozone. 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 I'm just living the dream. I'm in love with the lights.